Austin McConnell is here. Like what the, the f f as <laughs> there are quite a few assumptions you've made about me in my work so far. I'm gathering that you just want to be watching one of my videos for the first time. Yes, I'm based on stuff that you said. I see that you're an inspiring white writer podcaster. No, I am a writer podcaster. Yeah, condescending little baby. And you've got quite a few things that you've made over the years. I'll try to check them out. Thank you. They're great. You should. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. Right. All I do is okay, so the first thing we're going to be watching tonight, the first thing we're going to be checking out um, is a video from a guy named Austin McConnell, who I don't know. Um, he is a, a YouTuber with 1.46 million subscribers, but he has a very, very bad turnover, it seems, in his videos. Um, I've been doing... Shush, 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 shush. So, you know, he's got one video that's from three years ago, 3.1 million, but generally a lot of his videos that I'm seeing that are recent, 63,000, 31,000, 211,000, 66,000, views which you know that's a lot technically you know what i'm saying but considering the size of his channel he's kind of not really not really knocking it out of the park um so I, I don't know if that goes into any of this stuff and i'm kind of interested to see what kind of shit he even fucking makes but this is his video i used ai in a video there was backlash and um, we're going to watch this. Ooh, that, that just vibes perfectly with this. More, more YouTubers making all black background videos that look aesthetically wonderful with, with my setup. That's amazing. Audience that is, let's just say. I, give yourself a few, by the way, give yourself a few minutes. If you're trying to, time of this, this is very irritating. If you're trying to start off a video make any video, give yourself a few seconds of airtime before you start the video so people can like hear what the fuck you're saying. Cause no one pays attention to a video or a movie the absolute second it starts. That's why like are the, the like upcoming things are so great for people because they know they don't have to rewind to them. You know, when it's like upcoming on this YouTube video, you start hearing it and then you kind of like, oh, okay, all right, I'm getting in, I'm getting in vibe. Um, this is my, this is a thesis statement. This is a synopsis, a vibes based short hand uh, rendition of what the fuck's going to be going on in this content. That's great. Starting off your videos where at 0. 0.0001 seconds you are starting to talk is miserable. Take a breath, let it start. Fade in from black so that it also, if I have to restart, I can get back to where it is. This is like quiet and, and, and out of the way. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to hit play here. This video's publication, there is, at the time of this video's there publication, go. there is a portion of my online audience that is, let's just say, upset with me. Today, I want to talk about why and then, fingers crossed, try to have a nuanced conversation about something that in recent months has become a bit of an internet boogeyman. AI! AI is everywhere. Artificial intelligence systems. Artificial intelligence. AI. <sighs> Evolution. This piece of art right here, believe it or not, will was I know this is me, but does this found, does this kind of feel like outdated to you guys? Like, if you have enough, it, it, it this just just feels like two thousand and seventeen youtube i don't know what it is but that, that's the vibe generated almost entirely by ai these days even the least talented of us can create artwork to rival rembrandt generative ai is unlike any other technology that has come before a robot made it ai software i have never worried about my future as an artist until now ai is a tool just like a paintbrush is a tool i was involved this wouldn't exist without me why are you trying to discredit the person behind the technology? Artificial intelligence. Holy cow. By now, you're probably sick of hearing about it. Too I long. I certainly am. Too the long of an year intro. year or so, advancements to general artificial intelligence programs has upended almost every facet of human life. AI has basically become the business buzzword. It's being applied everywhere, even when using the moniker is probably not entirely accurate. There's a greater discussion to be had about all the implications AI is having in things like manufacturing jobs, customer service, product marketing. My opinions on 
these use cases sort of vary from industry to industry, so I just want to focus on my line of work. In the creative space, generative AI creative programs space. like Dolly e and Stable Diffusion that can convert word prompts into images have gained a ton of- I, this is so, I hate these. I fucking hate these videos so bad. Okay, I'm just gonna come out and say it. Um, I don't like videos that are you talking and then slapping 10,000 fucking stock images and videos over your dumb fucking points to highlight them. I'm sorry. This is a personal attack against Austin McConnell and everyone else that makes content like him. Um, it is the most boring shit on fucking earth. Uh, but it's like a documentary. I have seen documentaries. I fucking went to college. All right. I, I better yet. I went to fucking high school jazz band and in high school jazz band. I watched the fucking whatever 30 part um, fucking what's it called? The guy that does the zoom ins uh, jazz series, right? The guy that did Civil War, all of those things. The suit. You, I know someone in the chat's going to say it. And those are great. Why are those documentaries good? Because the, the images and the videos that come up help tell the story of what the fuck is going on by building onto it. You understand that? Building onto it. By, by, by building onto it. Also, you have, in addition to your own dumb fucking mouth running the entire time, other motherfuckers. That's the two ingredients. Building onto it, other motherfuckers. Those are the two things I want in a documentary. Why? Because I don't give a fuck what Austin McConnell knows. I don't know who he is because he hasn't told me yet. This video is an hour and 48 minutes in. I know that he's a YouTuber and a bunch of his audience is buttered at him and he has the same uh, reading cadence when looking at a camera as Colleen Ballinger while her fucking mouth is slavering at the thought of picking up a fucking ukulele, all right? I don't fucking care, Austin. I don't know who you are. Give me your background. Give me your credentials. Don't just start talking about some shit you know, that you don't, that I don't know that you fucking know about because it's not valuable to me. You're, you're just talking over stock images. It's little kid shit. It's very upsetting that YouTube was such a shit show that people managed to get 1.25 million subscribers off of the most dog shit, embarrassingly put together freshman fucking uh, college student content you've ever fucking seen. If the rest of your shit is like this, I'm not surprised your audience is pissed at you because they're probably just confused as fuck why they hit the goddamn subscribe button. Sorry, I hate these. I hate them. It's funnier when Metatron does it because Metatron's a fucking sociopath. Or not a sociopath, he's just a fucking goof. He's my goofy goober. He is my pet, Italian, possibly schizophrenic, delusional person who believes that he is the coming of God's mouthpiece on earth. I love that. I listen to him talk because he's a fucking insane. But I don't know you, Austin. I know I'm fucking a minute and 48 minutes into this, but I'm not Hassan. I can't turn this on and then leave. You need to say some valuable fucking shit. You talked the second the video started. The second the video started, words were coming out of your fucking mouth, and I still don't know why you're making this fucking video. Hey, people are upset at me because of AI, the internet's new boogeyman. Three fucking minutes of stock images in a song that you didn't make. I can only assume that you might be on the wrong side of this at this point. I'm losing my fucking mind. I think I'm also upset because I know that this is going to get flagged. Because I can't, I don't have the rights to that music. I'm going to have to pay YouTube 15 fucking dollars so that I can use whatever fucking dog shit ass, bullshit, royalty free fucking music you slapped onto this with your fucking shriveled balls. You son of a bitch. I'm done. Okay. Pray, play. There's also the I actually am more upset about it than I thought I was. Chat GPT, an AI powered language model. And every day, it seems like there is some new company out there releasing new tools <sighs> to be used by creative types to bring an idea in their head to life. These technologies I'm sorry for getting upset with chat. Sorry, chat, I'm not upset with some you. Some finding them fun tools to play around with, while others believe that they are simply lazy shortcuts that rob certain industries like writers and illustrators of work, while in some cases. That you needed that. You needed those two clips. Thank God. The genius, Austin McConnell, fuck YouTube royalty out here, took the time 
to go and look up stock images of somebody typing and then also drawing so that I knew that he was articulating the concepts of writer and artist. Holy shit. This is on par with Ken Burns. That's what it is. I didn't even have to look at chat, but you guys probably answered that. I didn't have to even look. This is on, this is Ken Burns grade shit, right? A guy yammering about fucking nothing. And when he says a noun or a verb, I get a little picture that accompanies that. Who the fuck are you making these for? Stealing their intellectual property by way of referencing copyrighted images in their training data. What does did he fuck? Did he hit that with the fucking? Did he hit that with the air quotes? Work while in some cases stealing their. Oh, stealing! <laughs> Why? That's the part that you shouldn't have had the camera on you because now you look like a fucking moron because they are. Their intellectual property by way of referencing copyrighted images in their training data. Oh, what does this have to do with me? Well, this is a whole thing. Year, I'm mm. developing an independent 3D animated movie. It's a superhero flick based on an abandoned, now public domain comic book character. Of course, it's of course. Every time, every fucking time, every fucking time, every fucking time, I have to hear from one of these fucking morons. It's a public domain thing. What we really wanted to do was just try to tell the, the story of Ichabod Crane and the Headless Horseman in the modern era. If you're not upset with that, you might be mad at art. What we really needed to bring to the forefront these days is a rehashing of Pinocchio, a story that I don't think has had enough retellings. <laughs> you know why it's in the public domain? Because it's fucking trash. No one gives a fuck about it. It's a cape comic. They suck. All cape comics are bad. I know this because I like comic books. They all suck. They've always sucked. Statistically speaking, you get one. You get one fucking The Killing Joke for every 10 million fucking pages released of Batman. Why? Because cape comics are a boring cash grab. They suck. And you brought this guy back? Fuck off. I ran a Kickstarter last year and raised enough- Look at that fucking- <laughs> I'm not gonna make it. Light production, but 3D animation takes a lot of time, so to keep folks entertained in the meantime, I also produced two side stories featuring two other characters as a form of supplemental content. Produced! For Zeros, my Produced! Universe. One of the How? projects was a book that I co wrote with Elizabeth McIver called The Spider Queen. We're really proud of it. It's an action thriller that we spent about a year on, but the thing is, oh. I've written books before and they typically struck. Oh, this guy. I am forever dealing with the challenge of converting YouTube viewers to actual readers of my work, so... Yo, fucking same, man. I'm in the same boat. But actually, I'm like at a fucking 1,400 subs, and I've already got a bunch of new people. You know why? It's because before I started a YouTube channel, I spent like 20 years getting good at writing. Like 20 fucking years of my... I was dog shit, and I practiced a bunch, and now I'm good enough that when people see my writing, they're like, fuck, I need more of this. Put it in my fucking veins. Not just, you know what I've always thought? What if I wrote a book? <laughs> I decided Dork I shit. Put together the first chapter. I'm three minutes in, I'm so sorry. Style with a full audio production featuring different voices, music, oh. effects, the whole nine yards, and then release it totally oh. free for people who were either on the fence about picking up a copy and checking out the whole story, or who were just looking for something entertaining to spend about an hour watching. The budget for books, especially independently published ones, is typically quite small. I did not have a lot of money to spend on it, and all of what I did have went toward paying Elizabeth, the co-author, as well as professional editing, proofreading, formatting, and commissioning artists for the book's cover design, as well as a few marketing materials. Audiobook production typically costs a lot of money too, and they take time to develop. Spider Queen's Audible version is still in production through Amazon's professional services and even when it's <laughs> he went to acx bro how do you have 1.35 million fucking whatever the fucks and you don't have you can't get better than acx at audible Jesus Christ, can man. only really be listened to on their ex of my viewers have the ability to afford a book or an Audible subscription. So I figured that this storybook video would just be a great way to let everybody ex Everything that comes out of his fucking mouth irritates me. That's such a dog shit excuse. I'm doing it for the pores. What I think is the best thing for the poor is for me to um, try to shrink all of my costs and pass the savings on to them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to eliminate the middle class in order to allow the uh, lower class to afford nothing. 
experience some of the Spider Queen story free of charge. If it was popular enough, maybe I could just do the rest of the book like this. Shortly after releasing the video, however, the backlash began with accusations that the video was produced from unethical AI image generation. These I mean, you had to cover up you had to cover it up immediately because those shots the look like dog shit. negative comments that I received from various viewers, I put them on the screen now because I honestly want everybody who left negative feedback to know that I took the time to read every single one of those comments and really consider what they had to say. I'll be reading quite a few of these on camera too, so stick around, you might be one of the lucky ones. So like, as I see it, all of the negative comments seem to focus on three main pillars of contention. The use of AI What's is going on lazy. I should have hired illustrators using AI. The Dunning Kruger compelling me to say that reading a book out loud is easy. I can do it. Oh. Because I now have some reflections. It's going to be a long I was doing it today. Sorry. It's miserable. <laughs> AI is lazy. Fez Hoof commented, this video is an absolute embarrassment. The obvious use of AI in both visuals and narration is just based, based Fez Hoof 9371. Absolutely adorable chibi avatar. So disappointing. 10 out of 10. coming from a creative. And doing so to promote your own creative work, you had to put a couple hours into editing this together, reading the base script out to feed into the narration AI and rendering the video. And not once did the irony of what you were doing hit you. Frankly, at that point, I wouldn't be surprised if a majority of your book was AI written with a couple yes. of touch-ups thrown in by your own hand. Which is always true. Assume that of anybody that uses AI. Why would I not assume you kept cheating? You know, what I mean? if somebody turns in plagiarized work, would you just be like, well, you know what? That's definitely the only time they've ever done it. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, it, it's, there's a reason that your average five terabyte enjoyer likes these, uh, these AI programs. <laughs> it's because they get, let you get away with the same thing a lot of times in a row without any fucking repercussions. Take the video down and AI pros is such dog shit. Is awful. Misleading. It's insanely there is a bad. handful of people here in the comment section saying they've purchased your book who very clearly believe they're being sold a graphic novel slash comic when in reality what you're selling is a text only piece of literature. Now I'm not quite sure about that last part. I have looked through every single comment on that video and I could not find a single one from anyone saying they thought they were buying a comic. But even if I did somehow miss it, I think I have made it like abundantly clear that the Spider Queen is a- What? I'm sorry, what? It's not even a fucking comic book? They were buying a comic. But even if I did somehow miss it, I think I have made it like abundantly clear that the Spider Queen is a novel. I mean, it's even- I'm sorry, what? And clearly says so. Miss it. I think I have made it like abundantly- You've made it abundantly clear. Five previous videos that cover the book. Spider-Man Strikes Back. Okay, well that's just first off a comic book. I don't think- I know there have to be novels. There have to be Spider-Man novels. It can't not exist. But that is what we call a comic book. The Spider-Man trilogy they don't want you to see. I'm going to assume that that's a comic. <laughs> Meet the Spider Queen. Right next to it. Was the original Spider-Man a woman? Co Cuba Cola, the soda that didn't exist. I'll take Cuba. What the fuck does that have to do with anything? I'm building a cinematic universe. This looks like... that. that first off, that's a movie. I'm building a cinematic universe is saying that you're building a, a, a fucking universe that is displayed in cinemas that is a series of films. What the fuck are you talking about? And then The Spider Queen, chapter one, uh, which is just a studio, studio Ghibli anime ripoff. What, what the fuck? Clear that the Spider Queen is a novel. And it even clearly says so on the purchase page. But setting that aside, back to Fez Hoof's main complaint that the video he in fact did not make it abundantly clear. Reference this idea that to produce this storybook video, all I really did was just yeah. Some words so wait, does this guy actually have any IP rights to Spider Man? Obviously not. Make movie or is Spider Queen just completely unrelated and he's using deceptive titles and thumbnails to give it some pressure? Yeah, absolutely. It was that easy. Those actually familiar with animation and video production, of course, understand that this assertion is anything but the truth. This is the original project file for the Spider Queen storybook. You'll note that it was created over five months before the video's eventual release. What? That's because I worked on this video for five months. This was not some slap together thing made in a weekend. It took longer to make than most of my fully animated YouTube videos. So let's break it down. The Spider Queen's main character, Shannon Kane, is an adult female. The story is told- Five months, by the way, is not long enough for an animation. That's actually, that's still, if you don't have any respect for animation, that's just saying you slapped it together in a weekend in a different ver like i got an animation done in five months is like oh so what is the team that you have working day in and day out on the animation 
<laughs> shout out if we have if you're in chat and you're an animator, just shout out the length of time it takes you to do a full processed minute of animation. Just shout out that time um, for 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 information in chat. <laughs> mostly from her perspective. And if there is one thing I have learned over the years- Tyler, you colored your drawing in the corner. I did, I did. It generally goes better if the voice performing that character is also female. So I should just hire a female voice actor, right? Well, yes. I tried. I held three separate rounds of audition- Sponsors payments, you fucking bastard. You're not showing the how much you're paying though. Honestly, so absolutely, this guy's officially sus forever. That much. And I was also quoted sus for forever. Way, way higher than what my budget would allow for this. Around this time, a fellow YouTuber introduced- Those are great, those labs, are- A text-to-speech engine that's recently been made- Did I tell you? Didn't I not tell you guys? I, I called it. Literally, I called the exact cost. I in waves it. online, text to speech technology has been around forever. And I actually didn't think that it would be good for a narrative project, but I tried the software out anyway, and lo and behold, it actually wasn't that bad. Honestly, I thought I was going crazy, so I did a test with a focus group comparing the top 10 voice narrator auditions with the AI tossed into the mix. I am not making this up. Everybody picked the AI voice as being the best version. None of them knew that it wasn't real. It was. So let's just let's just take into account how he achieved the results of this specific experiment. We have already articulated I cannot afford a professional voice actor. So who the fuck is doing the voices versus the the Spider Queen narration line. So if it's even in this thing. So he put up who? He put up who? 10 random people against this fucking AI that aren't professionals. And also I would be I, why are you not playing that right now? You should just be playing that, Mr. I put in fucking clips for the smallest thought I have. Why are you not sharing that information? Allow me to make a judgment on my own. I want to hear it. I want to hear what your fucking AI narrator sounds like. I'm stoked. I do voices and recording. I desperately, I desperately want to hear it. Preferred over the real world auditions. It was the only option that I could afford. And also, what was the sample size? Like, not even getting into like, I, I wish Destiny. Okay, so I'm gonna, um, what is the, uh, what is the exact, what is the sample size of this? <laughs> you know? The voice used is licensed by the company, so everybody involved is being fairly confident. Austin McConnell is like here. What the fuck? As there are quite a few assumptions you've made about me and my work so far. I'm gathering that you just want to watching one of my videos for the first time. Yes, I'm based on stuff that you said. I see that you're an inspiring white writer podcaster. No, I am a writer podcaster, you fucking condescending little baby. And you've got quite a few things that you've made over the years. I'll try to check them out. Thank you. They're great. You should. Says who comments. <laughs> Welcome amazing, to the podcast. Right? Like all I did was just copy and paste the book's text into the program, hit generate, and we're done, right? Yeah, no. <laughs> text to speech is not perfect. Inflection and <laughs> he stopped by <laughs> can be all over the place. And oftentimes I had to generate specific lines over 30 times before finding a good take, especially if it was dialogue with heavy emotion. Henry, Henry, are you okay? Henry, Henry, are you okay? Henry. Henry, are you okay? This is a timeline of the over 1,000 audio generations that I personally had to Frankenstein together over the course of 25 hours of editing. That's just the narration. On top of that, there were, of course, dozens of hours spent sourcing royalty-free music and sound effects, all in an effort to make a fully-fledged <laughs> audio production. I spent weeks on the sound mix to try and get it up to quality, and it's not perfect, believe me, I understand that, but to suggest that this is something that anybody out there can replicate in just a couple of hours Hours with a generative AI is not a fair assessment at all. That's just the audio, but of course the main contention seems to be with the visuals. Alta before if it's just, it, like if, if your contention though is that it's not a couple of hours, but but I think you're just trying to articulate like literally two hours. It's still you're you're spending less time overall than than if the other person would have it. But also you're spending your own fucking time and like not paying the actual person for a good product. The arguments are a weird. It's like I'm answering this argument sideways from this argument. So it's basically like you just worked for a really long time to turn out dog shit. What the fuck? What where, where the what the fuck is the dub there? Where, where at what point is this okay? <laughs> Sorry, but the AI generated images and almost definitely voices from what it sounds like on a sponsored video to promote your book just feels. 
gross. And this throws the whole project into question. Like, how can we know AI wasn't used to write the book itself? And all for this public domain comic character multimedia project that I guess the channel is just about now. Each piece on its own would be whatever, I guess, but all of this has the air of wanting quick results. I know making stuff yes. is hard. Your channel has shown what a struggle it can be, like with films and your previous book, and I felt for you there, but the whole direction of this channel has had this undercurrent to it. From the AI to the royalty-free stuff that started out as a kind of funny joke turned into, oh, he's really committed to the bit, isn't he? We're seriously still doing this? God damn, You're man. capable of better and more ethical content than Did this. I? But maybe content should be it. No, it's still on 1.25. I'm going to have to put this up to 1.5 to get this through you. Shameful. You reading. should delete this video and apologize for taking extreme shortcuts. Sam Agreed. Wilson 259. This video required zero labor since the entire video is AI generated. Sam actually left a lot of content. It did. It did require zero labor. Your labor putting that shit together is not still the labor of record. You didn't do the recording. <laughs> Do you not get that? Editing it is just another one of the jobs you have to do. That's another person that you've got to pay in the chain. You've got to pay somebody to cut it. I've got to do I've got to do that. I recorded today. I recorded 45-ish minutes raw. That's going to end up being about 35 minutes and I've got to go and I've got to listen to all of my cuts, all of my takes. I've got to reorganize them and put them together. That's labor I've got to do. But the other thing I did was read the fucking story. That's what they're talking about. Why don't you fucking understand that? What is not clicking in your fucking head, man? <laughs> you can do this video in a day since AI doesn't require art. Try to remember that I'm an actual human being going through his own struggles. It may be gratifying to insult a stranger online. Don't do that. You're getting timed out. Time out. Think about what you've done in time out, Mr. 1.2 million. Having to come explain himself to Mr. fucking nobody over here. Don't do that to me. Don't do that to yourself, all right? You're getting made fun of because you did a bad thing. You were a bad person. You're a bad person for doing AI, for telling people that they could maybe do it, for trying to show people that there's shortcuts in life. I would be making fun of you if you were trying to teach kids how to cheat on their fucking SATs. I would be doing the same thing. It's bad to do. It's bad to do, and now we're taking the piss out of you. And that's, that's, you're going to have to fucking live with that, man. This is, this is your moment. You're in the corner. You've got a little dunce cap on. You just got to sit there and take it. If you think about it, if you would have never done this, if you would have actually considered the possibility that you had done something wrong and then stopped fucking doing it instead of making a whole video about how people were being mean to you and how actually it's really work and, uh, and making all these fucking mealy mouth excuses, then you wouldn't be getting fucking teased. This is how we're having it. This is the conversation that you get to have when you do a bad thing. If you do good things, People write you and they're like, hey, man, you did a good thing. That's fucking sick. That's just what happens. All right. Watch the rest of my shit. When people do good things in art, I celebrate the fuck out of them. I'm like, I fucking love that. How long did that take you? You're fucking great. That's fucking sick that you did that. But when you're getting online, making money off ripping off fucking artists, trying to put out products that are going to be ripping off artists that are skipping out on labor, trying to fuck over the working man fucking over people like me what i gotta fucking oh yeah if, don't forget i'm just a little guy i'm just a little fella don't you be mean to me no that's not how it fucking works sit there take your fucking licking and then keep on kicking learn from this grow but don't be a little fucking baby on the internet coming into my fucking chat and trying to fucking <laughs> don't forget i'm a people too are you or are you having a fucking AI come in here and just bot my fucking channel with like, hey, you should feel bad. I don't. I don't. If you were my actual kid, I would have to have this whole conversation with you in the backyard. Like, you're just ridiculous. All right, you're done. Now you got to go rake leaves. I know it's cold and it's dark out. I'll stay out here with you, but you got to rake leaves and think about what you fucking did. You know what I'm saying? Out of your mind. Artistry, creativity, or labor, every ounce of the brigandine stays on. There's so much more, but you get the idea. Again, the contention is Austin just lazily typed prompts into a computer and the AI made the video. If you actually watch the video, then you will know that this cannot possibly be the case. The storybook features various animation effects and motion graphics that were not AI generated. They were painstakingly crafted or added by me in a nonlinear editor. Which ones? You gotta show me which ones you crafted. Because, like, if you you, I would I would show you how I did it. 
because every, like every bunch, I have tons of animators in my fucking chat right now, and that will be watching this later. And they want to know how, what, what generators did you use? Because generators are just an asset; they're built into Adobe. So if you're saying that you were just adding generators that already ex existed into Adobe, you you drag and clicked, you you did a little bit of a little click click. That's not fucking impressive, man. We can all do that. Well, all of us, all of us can do that. That's just an aspect of using a program. It's basic built-in technology. That's like me saying, like, you guys don't understand. When I did that wipe transition right here, that was a lot of effort on my part. Like, dude. Non-linear editor anymore. The visuals for the Spider Queen storybook were produced using a variety of resources, including 2D art and character designs I commissioned or drew myself, 2D and 3D assets I purchased from royalty-free stock footage websites, generative fill and neural art filters available in either Photoshop or Adobe Firefly, which is an AI. They is still <laughs> trained only on stock images owned by the company, public domain content, or other openly licensed or non-copyright material. Keep that in mind, we'll come back to it later, and a diffusion model trained on the above materials. I have been using most of these resources my entire video career. Most YouTubers do. These tools allowed me to produce- Who's most? You gotta prove that one. <laughs> Which one are you talking about? Because I think the, 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 the control- Content Aware Fill on Photoshop got added like what? six months ago that I remember like content aware fill is newish because I, I saw that popping up content aware fill is fine for like filling in little 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 boops and bobs and stuff that's okay that's actually the use of a tool but my man, man you use just so much shit <laughs> otherwise. Now, can people use AI generators to make lazy art? Sure, absolutely. But the video that I produced could not have been replicated, as some have suggested, in a couple hours by a computer. Why do you keep saying a couple hours? Dude, people are just, it's a euphemism, my man. It's a euphemism. What they're saying is you didn't do the work. You're trying to rules lawyer. This is a, this is a term. It's called rules lawyering. You, you, should, you should look into it to see if it's a thing that you do in your day-to-day -day life because it might be fucking you up in your other relationships too because this is usually a thing that people do when they make a lot of fucking excuses. What you're focusing on is the specificity of the language. You're sp focusing on a couple hours. That is the literal thing that the person is saying. The spirit of the comment is that you are not taking the time to do it. You were just throwing it together as fast as possible and not putting in the effort, all of the effort to do it. The person that wrote that knows that you did not do it in literally two hours. They never thought that before they started typing it out. But when you try to bypass the, 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 the criticism by focusing on a hyper-specific aspect like that, Th that's insanity because you know you did it faster with the AI tools than you would have you would have done it like if you didn't have them you know what I'm saying like you know that that wasn't the right response and that's not what they're saying but it's weird that you're, you keep going back to it. It required a heavy and overwhelming human involvement, at the very least to write the actual book, but certainly to create this entire production. This shot here is a great example. We've got a generative fill background that was produced using a royalty-free 3D environment combined with 3D and 2D royalty-free assets using commissioned art with alterations I hand drew, all of it composited together and animated what commissioned art? Commissioned by who? It better not be an AI commission. I will be deeply upset with you if you are commissioning AI art. But this is just a Studio Ghibli-like person. I think anybody in my... You could probably pop by my Discord and get one of these for like 25, 50 bucks. You should be like, hey man, can, can anybody draw me just a redhead? <laughs> this, you can do this without having to buy a background. If you're just going to blow it out, man, and you have access to Photoshop, just draw shapes in rough angles. And then hit it with Gaussian blur. It'll it'll accomplish the exact same effect. I swear to God. And you don't have to pay thirty five dollars for a picture. <laughs> Made it by me in Adobe After Effects, where I added camera movement, color correction, focus effects, timed it to royalty free music that I have licensed and curated, featuring sound effects from a stock library with reverb and mixing that I did, integrating a vocal reverb that I son. You threw reverb on there, buddy. If you believe that this method of video production is lazy content, I've got to listen to this now. I need to hear what the fucking audio sounds like on this because that's actually my specialty. And tell you that this video took way longer to put together than I ever would have anticipated. And if you think that this is something that anybody with an AI program can do, I welcome you to try and replicate it yourself. It's Austin's hours. birthday and I'm Austin, being mean to him. I'm sorry, Austin. Happy birthday, man. This effort, <laughs> why not just commission artists to make it for you? And Literally. I respond with what money? 
Marvel Studios caught a lot of no, 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 no. Also, when you say this question, you have to say with what compensation. Think I'm going to get back to that later, but think Recently, with what the opening compensation. Of Disney Plus exclusive Secret Invasion, they used AI art in the production of the visuals, and several news articles and blogs took them to task for using computers for this instead of just hiring artists to make yes. original material. Marvel Studios then responded to the backlash by pointing out that they had hired artists to create this intro, and that the artists had elected to use the AI-assisted tools because of the... No, 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 no. I, first off, I don't believe Marvel Studios at all. AI is just one tool in the array of tool sets. Terry Price, the government action, comes the initial story fade, illustration, AI generation, 2D, 3D, and culminate in the final compositing stage. Sus. The other world Very sus. Especially, like, especially a weird thing to say considering how many people in the special effects industry and the post-production industry are like constantly getting fucking fired. They're, they're not even represented by a union in a town where you have to be in a union to, to not get, like, diddled by Harvey Weinstein. Like, the, it's just well known that they get fucked over all the time. And I have people in this industry that I fucking know. And they said that being forced to draw over bad AI is a thing that happens all the time, and it's insulting to them. Also, why just listen to Marvel? Why not try to find the artists? You know, if you had time, like, you, just go talk to, like, anybody else. It, you didn't have time to do it? This this video had to come out? Then maybe the video didn't need to be made, my man. Maybe the video was a mistake. Aesthetic that they offered the whole time. To lessen the workload on already stressed VFX teams and that the AI images were merely... <laughs> VFX teams are stressed because they don't have a fucking union. <laughs> and they don't get paid good. And they don't have fucking hours that they have to work on. Damn it. Of an overall transformative title sequence that involved several <laughs> We use the AI for them. We use the AI for them. Ah. All of which were paid for their time and services. There is definitely a separate discussion to be had about large-scale TV and movie studios with seemingly bottomless budgets taking AI shortcuts as a way to undercut artists Who's and adding Austin Shout out to the recent writer strike Who is and Jake actors strike. I am not Marvel Studios. I am an independent creator experimenting with technology to do his best to make neat and affordable stuff before he dies because because telling stories is fun the main point of contention for some telling stories isn't just like fun yeah, you know I'm that the storybook it. animation if i was going to do it should have been done by either doing it all myself without any computer assistance or yes paying illustrators for every single frame yes Setting aside the fact that I did commission or, and or a combination of both and have in fact commissioned several artists and creatives throughout the entire Super Zero's project but this is just goes back to this is the fucking oldest thing in the world oldest fucking thing in the world and every fucking fuckwit libertarian will say well if you don't have the money for it then maybe you don't get to have it is that not just a thing if you can't afford it you don't get it you know what I'm saying like you just can't afford it then you don't get to have it because if you take something that you can't afford to have Without paying for it, my man, my dude, my friend, my brother in fucking Christ, inshallah, understand, you fucking stole it. <laughs> You're articulating it. Oh, I think the yeah, that madman. Independent YouTube creators to only create things if they are financially able to, like, hire professionals for every element of the video. And also, this is such a bullshit thing because you can hire so many. There's so many other ways to work around it. There are so many other ways. There are tons of people. I guarantee you I could ask people in my community right now. Hey, man, I can't pay you uh, the cost of a fucking $1,500 per diem. But like, can I negotiate with anybody that could just doodle me like a real quick, like an animation for Miss Fennec over here in the corner where just like her ears twitch or something? And I guarantee you I can take bids on shit like that. And, and the thing is, is if I don't get it, I'm not going to go and fucking go to AI because I can't afford the market. When you go to the market and then you steal from the market that you can't afford to, you depress the market. You decrease the overall value of everybody. This is like economic shit. I know this is even like you're not even there yet. We're, we're just to ethics, <laughs> ethics and art creation. But you can't. You can't just go depressing markets like that and taking away those jobs. I guarantee you, though, if you've got a 1.2 fucking million goddamn fucking subscriber platform, even though it maybe your videos don't fucking roll off that hard, you could have just gotten some interns in there. And a thing that you can do, and I said this earlier, is you don't have to necessarily pay people off rip. You can offer them compensation packages like ACX does. You can say, hey, man, I'm going to give you $25 per finished hour of work, and then also you get 50%, 10%, 2% of the take. That's what they do 
in Hollywood to make up for the large amount of money people aren't going to get paid on the front end. It's a thing you may have heard of called royalties. You can offer people royalties, especially on a large project that might actually be successful. It is something I, as a small artist, would have to do. If I want to work with somebody, I can offer them a chunk of my IP in order to, or, or at least the, uh, of, the, of the gross or the net or whatever it would have you, whatever they want to argue or not argue, <laughs> um, negotiate with me for compensation. And then you can still compensate artists and get it. That, that's, it's credit, right? You can also do insane shit. You can, if you actually give a fuck, by the way, you have to give a fuck. What you're trying to do is just lazily throw something out there because you're like, oh, fuck, why not? You know, if you're like, oh, I don't give a fuck, oh, who cares? Then yeah, of course, this shit doesn't matter to you. But if you're like me and you have stories that are, you're like, they, they really matter to you and they're the most important things in your life and you have nightmares about them and dreams about them and your entire future is, is just basically focused on having that be the one little word scrawled into the great paleolith of humanity, then you, you, you fucking, you can reach out and do commissions and stuff. You say, Hey man, would you guys mind working on this for this, this, this? I can pay you this. I can pay you that bargain talk. The whole thing in this is you're just like, Hey, I, I, oh, I threw out one single fuck. I threw out a bobber into the ocean and I, I couldn't get anything back. So here's how you undercut artists. That's the point of your video. And it's becoming more and more explicit as the video goes on. A better video. A more human video. A video that shows you care about the things you were talking about would be something more along the lines of helping a bunch of like animation interns get their start on a YouTube video. I paid these guys at the bottom rate in Hollywood. Um, they all agreed on to it, but every single one of these people is getting of this 10 person crew is getting, you know, nine or fucking whatever, 10% of the entirety of the thing. So we're, we're all going to be splitting it. I'm not even taking a, a thing of it. You can get on credit. You can start up, start up a whole company. This happens in, in fucking Hollywood all the time. Start up a whole company, establish your LLC, take out a bunch of fucking debt to pay your fucking people. And then hopefully that gamble will pay off. Like you're ignoring the economics of creation that have been established for better or for worse in this country for fucking like a century now. Willy nilly. It's bizarre. And it, it really does. And you have to understand this shows such a fucking bone deep disrespect for the people you're talking about because like you just think you can get in this. Do you not know all of this stuff that I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like, do you not understand all of these facts about creation and shit? Have you, are you hearing this for the first time? Because if you are, and this is all new to you, then the, having the fucking balls, the fucking absolute gonads at all to step into this place and say like, well, I'm just going to do what everybody else does for less money. That, that is why everyone's mad at you and it's justified. They should be pissed. You're trying to undercut people's jobs and you're also trying to replace fucking uh, good products with bad products. I would rather have the market be competitive at a labor level, having people figure this shit out and make good products than have it be flooded with dog shit still frame animation. By the way, I've been watching comics and cartoons my entire life. Everybody fucking hates living comic book things. I still remember I saw one, I think it was Conan the Barbarian. I was so excited to watch it. And it was a whole show. And then it's just fucking keyframes of animation with no connection between them. Not even keyframes, just the storyboards painted in and, and then just, you know, shifting fucking background foreground stuff. Super easy to do using parallax to, 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 to insinuate the action of motion. It, 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 it's, it's ultra basic shit. And unironically, if you were to pay a fucking, a, a real editor, all of the shit that you spent that much fucking time on would be gone. But that's the thing. If you don't have the money for it, you will get it. You don't get it. <laughs> Bit unreasonable. In a creative ecosystem that thrives off of remix, reinterpretation, and recontextualization, how far are we really going to take this? I paid for access to Adobe Firefly, whose neural filter plugins, brushes, and generative fill tools are all accomplished through licensed means. Even the diffusion models used for reference in many characters... Echo Manster, thanks for the 1K. Thanks for the 1K, Echo. 3D characters that I paid a license for. I have legal permission to remix and reuse these royalty-free elements using whatever creative or technical methods I wish. <laughs> That's 
That's why they're called royalty free, right? <laughs> if this art is AI generated, there's zero chance of me purchasing your book. The absolute least you could do is hire a working illustrator if you're going to make a promotion like this to increase sales. I'd rather you commission an artist yes. to do this. Why not reach yes. out to freelance artists? But the thing yes. is, I did. Before Adobe Firefly ever came on the scene, I actually reached out to various freelance artists to see if anyone would be willing to take on an over 50 minute animation project. And when I tried to reach out, I was either turned down because the scope of the project was too big or yes. because the prices that those illustrators quoted me were like way outside the budget that for I For 50? Made. Wait, these persons, I, I probably charge about 20K for a 50 minute, like an illustrator, like an animator said 20K for 50 minutes? I'd take that. I would take that. Can we say on the on the flip side of this, by the way, that um, that little clown cartoon that's it's in all the memes and stuff, uh, the digital circus that just got released, and apparently it has like one of the best little like setups for all of the animators and stuff, and it's got like I think in the ballpark of 103 million fucking views or something on YouTube right now. Um, so that's just a possibility. I, you, know, you got me thinking, you, you're doing some of the shopping for me, and now I'm considering dropping out of the whole commentary business. I'm just going to fucking take out a couple of loans, get two animators, and make a fucking, make, make a little cartoon here. <laughs> this is not a stingy, multi-million dollar movie company refuses to pay artists and decides to use AI instead. This is independent author and YouTube creator can't afford to spend five figures on what is ostensibly a trailer for his book that will barely oh. four figures when it is published. Some comments oh, suggest uh, even if I couldn't afford to pay a team of Here's how I did my book trailer. Hold on. Take take a second, Austin. Give me give me a second here. Hold on. Um we're just gonna go to uh westsidefairytales.com. <laughs> Westside fairytales.com. Okay, so this is my website. This is how I did I did a book trailer for my book. It was super simple. I, I have practiced for years to be good at audio and stuff, but I did this for super cheap. Um oh this is my this is my West Side thing, but let's see, uh, go to the books. Um let's see. Da, 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 da. No, West by God. Okay. So this is the story trailer. This is, I taught myself how to draw so I can draw a little bit stuff too because I really care about this shit. And this is my trailer. I basically drove around. Um, actually, I didn't even drive around. My buddy was driving, my buddy Josh, because he wanted to go to Harlan County, Kentucky. And so I just took video on my smartphone out of the side of the car and just threw this together. Something's not quite right in the quiet. This music is mine too. I made this music using um, Labs Free... It's the Labs free... No, no, I didn't use just the BBC. I used Labs um, on FL Studio, which you can use for free uh, if you get the FL, like the Fruity Loops and stuff. You should be able to install this plugin. I don't know if that's 100%, but I put this together with Labs, which is online. I think this is actually one of their free setups. This is like um, Dark Mood Cellos, right? I had Mountain Town of Targrady, West Virginia. Months after a local teen was lynched in the dead of a hot summer night, two men stand charged with murder in what the majority opinion considers to be an open and shut case. But it's so like all this is just me taking video on crime reporter from Charleston. It's finding out the smallest cracks in the official narrative run far, far deeper than she could have ever expected. Join Adelaide and West by God as she navigates small town secrets, the dubious ethics of her own profession, and the dark whispers of an ancient creature, known to some as the Witcham Woman, who prowls the shadowed hollers that lie between night and nightmare. Sent on overnight assignment to cover the start of the trial, Adelaide quickly realizes the story she's been told, and been telling, doesn't make sense. Cryptic assertions of a concrete alibi are emailed to her by the family of the accused. Nobody in town seems comfortable discussing the basic facts of the case, and the murder she's been writing about wasn't the only tragic death this summer. Adelaide extends her stay against the wishes of her. Kind of long. I'm not gonna make you guys listen to this whole thing because it's like a minute. But you know, we go all the way through. Ash best by God. Oh, this is uh, this is actually outside of defunct coal mine and stuff. This is uh, shout out fucking um, oh, God damn, I can't remember. This is West Virginia though. This place is great. Um, yeah, I can't remember off the top of my head. But that that it's pretty simple, right? Pretty basic, straightforward. A thing, yeah. I drew this as a, a promo thing, and then this uh, this lettering was done by my publisher to put it over the top. And I just wanted to have something, so I, I took you know whatever. I think it took me like twenty total hours, and and painted and drew this. I could have done it way faster if I was better, and um, if I could have paid somebody, yeah, they could have fucking banged it out too. Wouldn't have looked exactly like it does. Wouldn't have been exactly my thing. But that's a collaborative deal. You know what I'm saying? But this shit's all fucking pot. It's within your rasp. Just limit limit your fucking scope 
understand the the extent of the amount of work you can and are willing to and will put into stuff and then you can make good shit you know what i'm saying or at least passable it's just a book trailer <laughs> you know i didn't spend i didn't spend 2 hours researching royalty free music because i just know how to make the music now cuz i did that i made creating part of my life because i'm a creator that it's an inborn skill if i asked like you know, a guy to work on my roof, he wouldn't be like doing all this additional shit, teaching himself carpentry on the fly because I would be hiring a fucking carpenter or a roofer. You know what I'm saying? A professional that knows what they're doing because I am in this profession as a creator. I know how to do all this stuff. I have an extreme amount of respect for everybody that can do all of this stuff that I can't do. I want to make a video game someday. I would, it was like, I think about it. I dream about it at night. I know the exact video game, not just a video game. I know the exact video game. I've written the plot for it in my head. It exists inside of my skull. It is a Silent Hill game that's never been made because it's my Silent Hill game and it's going to be a Tyler thing instead of Silent Hill. That's just inspiration, but it lives in my skull. I've written music for it. I, I have dreams about it. When I'm walking around, I close my eyes and I can see the things happening because it's such an integral fucking part of me. I, I live for it. I wouldn't dare try to like use AI to create a part of it. I, I, the thought of a machine uh, touching it in such a foul way is beyond me. But like, I want to get people on board for that. That is, it, it, what you're talking about is the culmination of a man's life's work. You know what I'm saying? And you want it, you want it in a day. You want it bottled like lightning and you can't fucking have it. You can't have it that way and you can't permit it to be approached from that fucking direction because it will only serve to ruin it. You don't get to do multiple lives works in one work or in one life. You have to just do the one. You sit down, you stay focused. This channel is an aspect of me building my profile so that I can sell more of my work. I'm straightforward with that. I announce it at the beginning and end of every show. I want to sell my books. I want to grow my audience. I want the kind of people I think are going to be entertained by my stuff that I make, by me, because it's such a personal part of me, to gather around me as though we are at a campfire. And then at one point, when one of them is interested, they can be like, you know what? I'm going to pick up your book and I'm going to check it the fuck out. And maybe if I grow big enough and I make enough money building all of this stuff, I build the capital, I build the interest, then I can hire a team to make a video game. And it will take fucking years. It might be the last video game I ever make. And it won't just be me making it. It will be the team that I hire putting it together. That is the thing to say. No one is upset with the way that I'm articulating this. This isn't controversial. It's straightforward. I can articulate like the business plans that these things will go into, but like, like god damn. Like, like.